want to certainly ask our community to pray with us as we travel through this. Pray for our families, uh, firefighters, as, as we travel uh, down this road. Um, we received this fire call uh, yesterday afternoon at about 1740 hours. So as we, and um, we obviously first crews arrived in about four or five minutes thereafter and found the structure to be in fully engulfed in flame. They gave their initial reports and uh, made their initial size ups and deployed to the fire. Um, the, they fought this fire for well over an hour and um, the, the code red was called uh, after which, you know, which in our world means the fact that something has happened catastrophically or is about to occur. Uh, that was done and, uh, the, and at that time what had occurred was there was a collapse uh, of the upper level of the structure and it caused uh, four or five firefighters to, which was on top on that level, uh, to be uh, fall down into the basement area of, of this structure. Uh, at which time, of course, our teams turned from, from structural firefighting to a RIT emergency, RIT team, that they wanted to make a rapid entry team to, to escape or get our victims out, our firefighters out. Um, the, the firefighters were able to get four firefighters out relatively quick. Fire, Lieutenant Parker apparently was one of the first firefighters to um, fall through uh, from the first level and was pinned in. Uh, the, it took us, the firefighters, a uh, substantial amount of time to, to extricate him from his entrapped situation that he found himself in. And uh, unfortunately, by the time that we was able to extricate him from this condition that he was in, of course, this area is, is very hot. There's fire uh, in this area where he was. Uh, he did not survive this catastrophic event. We had um, several firefighters uh, who went into the RIT mode that sustained injury um, from their efforts to extricate Lieutenant Parker. They all were transported to medical facilities. Um, we had um, five firefighters. Uh, that was that was transported immediately. Of course, Lieutenant Parker was transported once he was extricated. Um, the um, efforts, resuscitative measures, were certainly given from the scene to out and throughout the hospital uh, in the ER. At which time the ER staff pronounced Lieutenant Parker. The other staff. Firefighters, uh, we had three firefighters that were there. Their injuries uh, were critical to the point in which the medical staff felt as if they needed to be transported to the Augusta Burns Center. Uh, those uh, firefighters were Battalion Chief Stephen Stafford, Captain Farrell Cromer, Corporal Adam Michi. They were transported to the Augusta Burns Center. Uh, I have spoken to the families. Uh, the preliminary reports that I have gotten from the families is that they're all in, in good condition at this point in time. Uh, Corporal Michi, um, was, his family was very hopeful that they would be able to return back home, back to Macon, Georgia today is, is, that, is that their hope. Uh, that had not been officially told to them. Uh, spoke to Captain Cromer's family, and Captain Cromer's family felt as if he, he was very restless and he was ready to leave Augusta. Spoke with Chief Stafford's family and they still had him sedated, although they felt as if his condition was improving very well. They felt very positive about uh, his status uh, when I spoke with them this morning. And so we are very hopeful and prayerful uh, that he too would be, uh, his, his sedated uh, state would be brought up to that of a consciousness and uh, he will certainly, hopefully, uh, be coming back to Macon very soon. Uh, 
is, is our hope. Uh, firefighters Cooey was admitted overnight for observation purposes, and he was released this morning around 10 a.m. Uh, to his families. Uh, firefighter uh, Ben Bollinger was too uh, released uh, this, uh, around 3 a.m. this morning. Uh, firefighter Bollinger was released uh, from the hospital this morning. So that is where we are at this point in time. We, we have not had any arrangements. Uh, we haven't set with the family of uh, Lieutenant Parker yet to begin to decide where we go from here. Um, but we will be doing that soon as we go forward with that. Uh, before we get into specific questions of, about any of the interest, I'll ask our mayor, Mayor Rickard, who has been with us all through last night, this morning, um, if you want to share some words. Chief, thank you. I, I will be very brief indeed just to say that uh, our uh, community uh, had a very sad and traumatic uh, day uh, yesterday uh, with this uh, catastrophic event uh, at this fire, uh, the loss of life uh, of one of the firefighters and injuries sustained by the others. Um, obviously, uh, aside uh, from the traumatic injuries sustained by those directly involved, I would have to tell you that I think every firefighter at the scene uh, suffered uh, a traumatic injury, uh, seeing what happened, uh, being close, being <clears throat> suddenly realized uh, the, the, the reality, the imminence of danger uh, and hazard and the possibility of death that's involved uh, in their day-to-day -day activities. We have been very fortunate um, through uh, training, uh, exercise, practice, and uh, skills development. It has been a long time uh, since this level of tragedy has been experienced by the fire department, and that's an admirable record. Uh, in fact, it, it's been so long uh, since the last fatality. Um, memories can dull, um, and this refreshes and opens up old uh, wounds for some, and there's a new experience for others, but in either case, it brings home the reality of the danger associated with being a firefighter and uh, how much we owe uh, as a community uh, to those fine men and women uh, who do this day in and day out. Uh, the fact that I am joined here by so many members of the uh, commission uh, serves as uh, evidence of how seriously we take this, how much we appreciate these fine men and women, and how our hearts go out to those that have been directly impacted by this, but how we also want to reach out to every member of the department, uh, regardless of whether they came to the fire or not. They will not be able to leave their house henceforth without a spouse work and being concerned. We should not, as a community, take what they do every day for granted. And we ought to always be cognizant and mindful of the risk that they take for us to preserve not just life, but property. They put their lives in jeopardy every day for us. We're so proud of them. We want to support them, and especially at this time, we want to support them as we go through funeral arrangements. We want to do what the family wants to do. We want to, to uh, work with the, these other uh, injured firefighters. We want to bolster the, the attitude of all members of this department to show that they are appreciated, uh, to show that they are supported, uh, to provide them with whatever counseling that they need uh, to work through these very difficult issues. This is a tough time for our community. Um, it's a tough time especially for this department, but I am convinced we will rise to meet this challenge, and together we will come through it stronger than we were before. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Chief, if you will, uh, talk about the type of 